something that I think you're going to really want to see. Do you want to see a dead body? What's going on YouTube? My name is Diesel and today we're back in a game that is still to be announced. Release date wise anyway. Autopsy Simulator. This is a demo. Link is in the description down below. It's a mixture of Autopsy Simulator, a little simulation game and a horror game. It is a story driven game with simulator elements. Just give uh, give you a heads up. It was probably going to see some 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 guts and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and let's hop on in. Y'all want to see a dead body? No, do not call me anymore. It's none of my business. You tell him. Uh, what am I, a detective? I feel like I'm in a de de detective's room. Uh, hmm, got some cigarettes, sir. Uh, some teacups. Not exactly the most comfortable looking office. Fragile. Huh, must be Italian. Uh, let's see. How am I supposed to record a lecture for the students now? I don't know. Feeling completely broken. It's for my guests, but they seem to never drink or say anything when they visit me. I borrowed it from Stephen. Uh, since Alice died, Stephen is the only person I trust. Oh, I'm gonna go nuts if I don't take my pills. What does this say? How to break out of this vicious cycle? Oh no. Okay. Alright, so look for your pills and go to the bathroom. I will assume that that's the bathroom. This place is wildly creepy. Where are my meds? Oh. Got a bunch of red pills right here. Why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? All right. I guess everything's okay. I'm not bugging now. All right. Now we can go get the camera. Okay. Uh, prepare to record for the students. Go to the storage area. What does this say? Handman, set one tape aside for me. I need the camera for my niece's birthday on Saturday. A. Burroughs. Well, hopefully there's not like a picture of a dead body on it or it's like, you know, some nudeness. It's this. Wet paint. Do not enter. Oh, it's good to see that someone's renovating this. Someone can't even pick up this tray. Like, what are we doing here, guys? Is this a professional setting or what? Obviously not. Look at this. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> Let's bring a bunch of a bunch of dead bodies down in here. Very medical, very sanitized setting. Oh. And a video camera from the 90s. Are we in the 90s? Possibly. Let's move on straight to our deceased. Oh, here's where we get to see the dead body around a, a whole bunch of garbage. I'm wondering how the new tripod Hello. is going to work. Wondering how the new tripod is going to work? Like a tripod. You just put something on it, set the legs up, lock it into position. Just frame it properly and... Oh. Alright. The best part about this game is that there is a censorship setting if you don't want to have the sheet over top right there. Oh, this should be fine. You can totally get that going on there if you want to see a full-blown shot of Dong. November 21st, 1991. Oh my god, it is the 90s. 8.43 p.m. Recording for medical students from the University of Missouri. The it's a hell of an angle, bud. by Jack Hanman. Ladies and gentlemen, it is always worth having a look at the files before conducting the autopsy. Uh -huh. That is where we can find all kinds of clues to what could have potentially happened to the deceased. Let me tell you, what a great angle to set up. Because we're going to be cutting open his chest. Let's put let's put the camera over to, <laughs> right towards his feet. His little tootsies. Well, all right, who do please we hold have her. here today. Uh, I don't know. Well, my, my mouse is bugging out. It's a demo. Mention the rookie mistakes. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's my orient to sensify you for a few issues. First, due to the fact that in the process of revealing and securing forensic traces, interference that changes the primary condition happens, the photographic documentation plays a huge role in the entire process of examination. Then, okay. the body needs to be placed on its back on the autopsy table. The pathomorphologist stands on the left-hand side of the body. Third, very rarely but still, the cause of death remains unknown if all the tests come out negative. That's the so-called white autopsy. Now remember, Why is it gotta be white? also happen. 
found All right. on the outskirts of a parking lot near a gas station, where he often begged and insistently offered to clean the windows of cars that were leaving the station. The body was found in a dry field drain. A frequent cause of traumatic deaths among the elderly is the various types of accidents, including traffic accidents or falling down the stairs. The body was spotted by a station worker during the morning shift. At first, he thought that someone had thrown rain boots and a coat in a nearby ditch. It took him a moment to recognize a human body laying on its back. Signs of libation could be found around the dead body. Empty bottles, traces of an inept attempt to start a fire, and a scattered makeshift blanket. Poor guy. The deceased is locally known as Old Toby. Homeless and Old Toby. For at least a couple years. He had gotten into fights and had been bullied by the problematic youth of the town. He was that type of a man who never kept off alcohol, which caused him to be homeless. As a young man working in a suburban coal mine most of his life, he already abused alcohol, and as the time went by, he'd fall into addiction more. Oh, that's interesting. Although alcohol poisoning is a sole cause of death among the elderly people is relatively rare, different levels of alcohol poisoning happen among one in four deaths of elderly people, which may suggest that alcohol abuse is a significant issue in this age group. What is important to note, even though alcohol poisoning does not cause death, it does increase the risk of accidents and their following injuries. Wait, alcohol poisoning doesn't cause death? I was not aware of that. Okay. Toby. Um, the body was found at 7 o'clock by Sheriff Matthew Thompson. White male, 76 kilograms, 5 foot 8, age unknown. The okay. deceased is a local homeless man named Toby Chambers. Toby! His son runs a hardware store. His wife ran away years ago. Local police have talked to residents, so we know more about the deceased. For example, that he loved drinking, and by no means was abstinent. Such clues can direct us to things that are worth keeping in mind during the autopsy. Okay, so find and put the gloves on. Aha. Uh -huh. Now Clubs. we get to work. We're going to need the camera. It should be here somewhere. Oh, must have left it in one of the drawers. Aha. Uh -huh. Good old Polaroids. Okay. Let's follow the procedure and prepare photo documentation. We must follow the top down rule. Luckily, we don't have to take pictures of the clothes this time. We are only focusing on the body. Let's keep in mind it's all about the legibility, not the perfect frame. Before we start searching for traces on the deceased's body, we have to take a main picture that goes in the files. Uh. Voila. Okay. Let's move on to the next step. Trace search. Hmm. Hmm. That's a no bueno. Looks like you got cracked. Okay. Looks like he's got some, some, some busted up knees, bud. We're going to need better zoom here. We're going to need, and that's perfect. Okay. So we got a couple bruises on his arm. Maybe a cut. Okay, okay, okay. People oh, it's tootsies. Most often die from accidents, alcohol abuse, or they freeze to death. Oh, jeez. Both suicide and homicide are also quite common. Oh. <clears throat> well, you don't have to stand close to be able to smell a strong odor of alcohol and other discharges. Ew. There's nothing left to say. Old Toby didn't spare himself. Oh, okay. While taking the photos. Some entries that could be potentially lethal caught my attention. Let's take a closer look using the magnifying glass. There's a magnifying glass? Okay. Whoa. Take the magnifier. Okay, so this is going to be a problem. <laughs> What's going on? All right, so I actually have uh, restarted the game real quick because I was having some weird things where I couldn't move my mouse. You can see that I was having a little bit of trouble bouncing back. I had a gamepad plugged into my computer at the same time. So if you have a gamepad and a mouse and does all that twitchy stuff, just go ahead and remove the gamepad. And now I can move freely yay, to do all sorts of weird things I don't want to do. All right, so take the magnifying glass. Okay, so we're beginning the autopsy. Tools. Magnifying glass. There are frostbite marks all over the deceased's body. That's not cool. They are most visible on the tips of his fingers. They can be recognized by the very specific color of the skin. However, the hands tell us much more. By the look of his feet, 
Hey. I assume Toby must have worn uncomfortable and dinky shoes for quite a while. However, such wounds have nothing to do with his death. Well, then why are we looking at him? An old wound that hadn't healed properly. It must have been some kind of burn or other injury. Nevertheless, it has nothing to do with the potential cause of... Then shut up. Hmm. See here. That's something interesting. While making photographic documentation, ecchymosis can be seen on the deceased man's head. The appearance indicates the intravital nature of the wound. We'll come back later to see if everything is alright with the brain. What oh, we, we will, here? will we? Okay. All right. The condition so, of the head tells us it could have been a fatal accident. Fatal fall. Okay. 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 So bloody hematomas. Further examination of the brain needed. Uh, lung, longitudinal scar, possible cause, scratches, and other minor damage to uh, finger uh, epidermis. Sorry, on the feet. Visible frostbite on the hands. Possible organ congestion. Odor, intense smell. He was getting the frequent cause hammered. of traumatic deaths among the elderly is the various types of accidents. Including traffic accidents or falling down the stairs. An old wound that hadn't healed properly by the look of his feet. It could be freezing all right. to death. Let's click on all five of these. Yeah. <laughs> the odor can be the result of alcohol intoxication. You think? At this point, that's all I can do based on all traces on the body of the deceased. The inside should tell me much more. Let's move back to the body. Now okay. let's check the level of muscle tension. This will oh, look at this. establish time of death. Let's raise the deceased's hand. Ew. Keep it in the arrow. Keep it in the arrow. Don't know what we're doing. And then let go. The stronger the rigor mortis gets, <laughs> the greater the resistance from the muscle. Sorry, tension. it's very disrespectful. Yeah, so At the same time, it is kind of funny. Loose. The rigor mortis has already subsided. We can then assume that the time of death stated in the files is correct. Hmm. Let's okay. grab a scalpel. Oh, geez. Okay. Here. All right. Here comes the real deal. Cut with the scalpel. Oh no. Hurt him no more. We always start from the neck and move down towards the symphysis pubis. The incision should be deep. Very rudimentary, very basic, which is fine. Next, I'm okay with that. Separate the skin and prepare to remove the ribs. Open the chest using the hand tool from the tool. Oh, jeez. Okay. Hand tool. Scissors? Hand tool? Is this literally my hand tool? Let's... Oh, my God. Oh, gross. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Open the chest using the hand tool with the tool wheel. Uh huh. The adipose tissue has an intense yellow hue. As you've probably already guessed, we're going to need the scissors. Oh, yeah, I guessed it perfectly. So, what do I gotta do? Remove the rib cage? Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Oh, <laughs> come on, kid. Both cartilage and bone tissues. We are actually interested in two things that you can see at the very first glance. The lack of organ congestion means that. Although the deceased was cold, hypothermia wasn't the cause of death. Obviously. Take the magnifier from the tool wheel. Uh-huh. Let's get a harder look see at these things here. Looking okay. The coronary trunk and aorta seem to be in good condition. There are no pathological changes that have contributed to our Toby's death. Well, once we've got the body ticked off, we can move on to the head. We okay. Eliminate freezing as the cause of death. Good. All right. So take out the heart and take out the heart. Oh. Um. I don't know if I'm examining it properly. At first glance, the heart okay. looks fine. Okay. Okay. Now we gotta take out the lungs. Are you sure you want to do that, bud? Okay. It's an okay lung, I guess. Okay, so blood testing, take Let's out the syringe. The side. At this point, we need to test the level of blood alcohol concentration of the deceased. Okay. We move on to collecting blood from the heart. Five milliliters from the left ventricle should do it. Okay. Now, the bladder. Click the bladder and drop at 10 milliliters of fluid. And then for the, uh, the eye for we some reason? We also collect the fluid from the deceased to determine the level of alcohol concentration in the vitreous humor. Okay, go Keep to the mixer. You have to set the right time and speed on both knobs before we the centrifuge. Our samples okay. may break into pieces due to the centrifugal force if we set up the wrong coordinates. I myself am terrible with numbers because I suffer from dyscalculia. 
Which is why I always keep the appropriate coordinates at hand. Oh, me too. Where the, the proper... Okay, there it is. It's glowing. Thank goodness. <laughs> 40 minutes, 75. All right. 45 minutes, 75. Time, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Uh, 75. Start the mixer. All right. Take out the heart and examine it. I did. Uh, hello? Ugh, damn it. If something goes to shit, it's all the way. That's probably the blown fuses again. Hold up. What? I must have had a flashlight somewhere. Oh, good. Good, good. Good, good, good. Uh, I guess, uh, okay, so take out the heart, restore the electricity, go to the storage. Okay, uh, okay. I was hoping to clock out early today. What was that? Is there a cat in here? Where did it go? Who brought a freaking cat in here? Jerk. Yeah, it's definitely the fuses. Right goes first, left next. Right goes first, left wow. next. All right. Uh, where's that unbearable noise coming from? Hey. That's strange. I'm pretty sure I closed the window. Anyone breaking into our place? What's happening? Here? Almost probably misses me already. Jesus. Okay, so take out the heart and examine it. Were we? Oh yeah, the blood alcohol concentration. Guess I gotta do that first. Well, everything is telling us that the BAC, blood alcohol concentration, is high. Hence the smell we're getting from the deceased. Still, to be 100% sure, I have to send the samples to the lab. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to conduct a detailed analysis here. Obviously. Put it back. <laughs> you, you, you put it back now. You put it back now, you hear. All right. So hold on. Examine the stomach, take out the stomach, and now examine it. let's take a closer look at the stomach. Diaphragm, stomach. Ew. There we go. As expected, the stomach has no major external damage. In this case, further inspection is no use. We must cut him open. All right, examine the stomach, cut the stomach open. No problem. I'll use the scalpel. I don't need this tool now. Saw? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're just going straight to the brain. I thought we were going to go to the stomach. Anyway, we will start dissecting the brain from the occipital lobe. Hold on, hold on here, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go crazy on cutting open the friggin' dude's head. No, stomach. Oh, you gotta keep on clicking it? Oh, oh, okay. I'm like, how am I not raising this? What's going on? This is gross. I don't know what I'm doing. And oh my God. Okay, 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 okay. We're examining the... Oh, just plunk, just plop it out. Just, just, just After grab it out. examination, we can see that the cerebral gyri in both brain hemispheres are symmetric. And the bones between them are clear. So far, I, so I good. see that. I see that. The seems to have had no effect on the organ we're examining. Let's oh, good. Check its transection. Moving on to the incision. Holding a knife with a long, narrow blade in your dominant hand, cut the cranial nerves on both sides, pulling the brain towards you. Oh, this is so wild. Oh, okay, so you gotta go all the way to the tippy top. I mean, I'm only carving into this dude's brain. Remember. Just one small fragment examined under the magnifying glass is enough to dispel or confirm our doubts. We then take the fragment of the brain to the tray and, literally and figuratively, go over it with a fi- Just as I initially suspected, we can rule the fatal accident out as well. Okay, good, good, good. 
good. What about his stomach that you kept on telling me I needed to go ahead and cut open? Okay, stomach. Let's go and inspect it. Uh oh, uh, can we can we remove some of this stuff here, guy? No. So far, I give this game a ten for creepy, a five for the gross, and a one for the functionality. What is going on? I'm just trying to cut through this guy's stomach while there's brain on there, and it doesn't allow me to escape. <laughs> like I can't like back up. Take the knife out. Grab some of the brain. No, nope, doesn't allow me to do that. So I'm just like carving. I'm just pushing forward. This is the most unprofessional morgue in the history of morgues. I should have some whatever license it takes for me to get, to, you know, stay in business. I should have it revoked quickly, promptly. There we go. Finally. That's interesting. In addition is it? to a large amount of gas and liquid, oh, it couldn't have been suffocation, could it? Now we need mm. to focus on the cardiovascular system, especially the heart. Oh, we'll excuse me while I try to move some of this. Carefully. All right, can I go back? Asphyxiation, possible, possible, possible. All, all, all things are possible. Can I right-click out of this? Is there any way I can move some of this? No, I sure can't. That's so stupid. You mean to tell me I can't take any of this? I gotta take out the trachea. All right. Come to the deceased's neck. All right. Let's get a good look at it. Looks like an alien. There we go. And uh. Same as we did with the stomach. External inspection didn't tell us anything. Now the scalpel comes into play. Inspect. We're cutting a small organ such as the trachea. We oh. must perform a precise incision to be able to cut with the very tip of the blade. We must, ladies and gentlemen. I got skills. Based on the report and preliminary documentation, it is safe to assume that the deceased passed out after consumption of alcohol and then fell asleep on his back. Oh and the gastric no! The contents refluxed and flooded the airways, causing death. That's why we don't forget about the recovery position at dorm parties. Oh, so he suffocated on his own vomit. And now it's all clear: the death was caused by suffocation. In addition to a large amount of gas and liquid, the stomach also contains small amounts of yellow grayish food content resembling some kind of meat. Either our deceased hadn't eaten in days, or some of the bulk of his stomach had found a way out. Okay, so body, cause of death, filling everything out. Doctor Diesel. <clears throat> Hold on, we gotta try our cursive. I'm left-handed, and I got a right. Hold on, bang! <laughs> went quite smoothly today. I'm about to get off. I'm left-handed, but I have a right-handed mouse. It's crazy. All right, close the chest. Close the chest. Okay. 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 Do I use my hands? Hopefully, of course I do. Why wouldn't I? In order to bring the chest of our deceased back to its initial state, at least to a small extent, we sewed the deceased using the baseball stitch technique. This stitching method is very strong and quick to do. I'm the best at it. Used to play ball. MLB ball. I'm I'm busy. I should probably get to that. I'm coming, I'm coming. Ugh. Jesus. They calling me. This is Dr. Jack Handman. Please leave a message. Good evening. How are you? How are you? How are you? What the f- is that supposed to be? I'll finish the stitching and I'm getting the fuck out of here. Ugh. Creepers. Oh, and the body's gone. What the fuck? That's the end of it? That's the end of the demo? That's wild. Okay, so... It's got a bunch of things that needs to get worked out, <laughs> but yeah, I enjoy the creepiness factor of it. I enjoy the autopsy, like even though it's it's I'm not a not exactly a guy who digs in on gore, but I enjoy the simulator part of it. Oh, and this is New Orleans too. We're in New Orleans. I like that part too. Oh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm gonna put this on wish list, and I hope to see it coming out soon. Pretty wild though. I think. It, I think when it comes to the demo, one, can't have a gamepad plugged into your computer when you play it, otherwise your mouse will bug out. Two, 
listen to everything that the guy has to say, examine everything around the area, and uh, three, looks like you're going to have to deal with a bunch of brain parts. Other than that, you're all set and ready to rock and roll. But let me know what you think again in the comment section down below because that is our episode for today. Folks, if you enjoyed this video, by all means, hit that like button, help out my channel, love for so much more than you know. And if you like it a whole lot, go ahead, hit subscribe. New videos come out every single day, live streams every week. Make sure you hit that bell notification and be aware of all the new content. Everyone, peace out, let's out, y'all. And I'll check you out right here again an Autopsy Simulator next time.